the summer residence of the Pope in Castel Gondolfo, just south of Rome. Inside the two domes perched atop the Papal Palace are the Vatican's telescopes. David Brown is a Jesuit priest and an astrophysicist. He was born in New Orleans and took his doctor's degree in Oxford. Now he is one of the stargazers for His Holiness. Father Brown feels this observatory is special. The dome has to be opened by hand, the old-fashioned way. And the astronomers like having nothing between them and the heavens. The German Zeiss telescope has served well for over 70 years. Father Brown focuses on individual stars and planets. Perfect, we've got it. Jupiter and four moons. All of the moons are on the left-hand side of it. Does he see the moon and stars as God's creation or as scientific objects made of dust and rock? doomed one day to be sucked into the oblivion of a singularity. The person who's looking through it, uh, for example, the Pope or, or, or uh, a brother or a priest who is using the telescope, he's looking directly at a scientific object and he's approaching it that way. Uh, so in that sense, he's not looking directly at God. But when he sees uh, the beauty of the sky at night and the object that is just one out of many millions, uh, in some sense, uh, it is looking at uh, sort of the fingerprint of God or the glory of God that uh, we're brought back, to, for example, to uh, Psalm 8, I believe, which says, the heavens proclaim the glory of God and the firmament shows forth his wonder. Astronomy brings heaven and earth, the visible and invisible, together. Do the stargazers search for clues to life itself and how it came to be? The observatory of Castel Gondolfo was dedicated by Pope Pius XI in 1935 and has been frequented regularly by the popes ever since. A photo of Pope John XXIII in the astrophysics laboratory. Pope Paul VI observed the moon as the first man set foot on it in July 1969. There is no other comparable research facility in the Vatican. For decades, George Coyne was the director of the Specula Vaticana, as the Pope's observatory is called. He considers the question of the origin of life, both as a theologian and as an astronomer. Stars are born and they die. As they're born and die, they create the heavier elements. That's the only way we get carbon and nitrogen and oxygen and iron. So the stars have created the elements from which life could come to be. And as a matter of fact, at least in this one instance, did come to be. So in that sense, scientifically, we are made of stardust. We're made of stars. But in this case, um, both scientifically now, but then adding on the implication, scientifically, this being, a human being that has been made of stardust, has developed consciousness. That is the universe in the human being, and that's a big step. If it is true that the body of man came from stardust and developed consciousness, what about the body of Jesus Christ? If my faith is correct, that Jesus Christ, truly God and truly man, truly man, then he was made of stardust. Father Coyne believes in the Holy Ghost and in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. He says that his science does not contradict his faith, and even now, science is unable to explain how and why life came to be. The first papal observatory stood behind St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican Gardens. Even before that, Observation towers were built on the Vatican grounds to chart the position of the sun. The Jesuit order has had observatories of its own in Rome since the 16th century. The Vatican started building its observatories much later.
modern telescopes were installed in the late 19th century. While the popes and the priests contemplated the heavens through the lens, the nuns charted them using photographic plates. Some 10,000 of these plates are still archived in the observatory's cabinets. By 1935, the big city lights of Rome outshone all but the brightest stars in the night sky, and the Specula Vaticana was moved to Castel Gondolfo for a clearer, unobscured view. The astronomers lodge in a former monastery. Many of the researchers at the Specula Vaticana are Jesuit priests. Father Sabino Maffeo has worked in the Vatican Observatory for over 40 years. He's written a book chronicling its history. The Pope's Observatory has an excellent reputation in the scientific community. The scientist priests look into the theories of relativity, quantum physics, evolution, and the Big Bang. They've captured images of the heavens that earned them the respect of astronomers the world over. Papa Leone XIII Pope Leo XIII practically founded the Specula Vaticana in 1891. In the Foundation Decree, he said that we were starting the Specula to demonstrate that the Church is not against science, to demonstrate that the clergy isn't as ignorant in matters of science as many would have us believe. Instead of outer space, Father Brown is looking through shelf space for the first treatises of modern astronomy. This book here is by Galileo Galilei on his uh, System of Two Worlds, one of the books which is our, in our collection of antique books. The Specula Vaticana's library holds 22,000 volumes, including scholarly works and journals on the priests' areas of expertise, dark matter, cosmology, galaxies, and the acceleration of the universe. The early writings on astronomy are priceless treasures. First editions of Galileo, Kepler, Newton, and Copernicus. What we have here is Copernicus's most famous work, the uh, uh, De Revolutionibus Orbium Celestium, which is the book in which he advances his famous theory of the sun uh, being at the center of the system with the planets, including the Earth, revolving around it, uh, which represented a break from the Ptolemaic system, which said that the Earth was at the center of the universe and that everything else went around it. The importance of Galileo's work, this book right over here being his uh, dialogue on two systems where he, he puts forth the Copernican hypothesis and uh, involves it uh, in a comparison with the old Ptolemaic uh, system. Galileo Galilei was an observer, the father of telescope astronomy. His contemporary, Johannes Kepler, calculated that the planets and their moons followed elliptical orbits. The two great minds anticipated Isaac Newton. What Newton did is that he provided the theory of motion that was able to explain why it was that the celestial bodies moved in a particular way. That gravity, uh, as explained in the Principia, is what governs the motions of the celestial objects. Key objects of the papal astronomers' investigations are meteorites that have been found on Earth. Analysis of them yields insights into the makeup of other heavenly bodies. Jose Fuenes of Argentina is a Jesuit and currently director of the Specula Vaticana. What does he see in the stones from on high? Here we have meteorites from the Specula Vaticana's collection. Just, just some of them. The solar system is about 4 billion years old. 